With a suction pool cleaner, obviously the common wearing part is a diaphragm. Now, depending on the age or the model of your cleaner, you have what is known as either a cassette diaphragm or one that's very similar to this with an angled end at 45 degrees, which is known as a standard diaphragm. So what we do is on this cleaner itself is there's a locking ring at the back of the cleaner. This will simply undo on the back tube, pull that off and you'll expose what we call an inner tube. Now this inner tube goes all the way through the throat of the cleaner and is what connects to the bottom mouth where the cassette then sits in. So it's just a simple matter of pushing that forward and then from the front of the mouth here, pulling that cassette out and you'll see the whole unit will just slide through like such. So here we are, you've got your inner tube with your cassette on the front of it. Now this is, this is just as simple as pulling it off again, like so. Common finds that you have on a cassette what's worn is, as you can see here, these open and close, that's the way they perform. On the side of the cassette here is where they're known to split. Very common, or on the sides here, due to wear and tear. Usual lifespan is anywhere from 12 months to 24, depending on the application, the suction or the pump and of course the debris that is going to be passing through here. Now, as you guys can see, that's not a huge opening. It is known for many or many cleaners that the application, the dirt and debris that is goes through here causes these to split. They're one of our biggest selling parts purely because of the people uh, don't apply them correctly or don't install their cleaner with their flow valve. It's a matter of putting that back on to your inner tube with the ring already on the diaphragm, of course, because you've got no way of adding that once it's all together. From there, putting it back into the throat of the cleaner, sliding it through. Now, the way that this sits into the mouth, there's, there's no specific way. Obviously, that center mouth does spin and rotate on itself, so it's not too important. All you wanna maybe do then at the back is just kind of pull it home into position, like so, no, it's nice and tight. From there, the rear locking ring screwed back on, and you're done. Diaphragm replaced, ready to go.